Greetings, unsettled souls. Sam I beat again doing political commentary for the media speaks. And due to the uh, way the days fell and my schedule fell, I'm doing this during the day. My lighting is sort of set up for uh, for nights. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go with what we've got. Looks good. See by the meters that it sounds good. And uh, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And as you do trickle in, I want to remind you of a few things. Um, how many of you... We're going to get to the Fukushima stuff. Don't panic. How many of you heard about the... Uh, the algorithm change that Mark Zuckerberg put in place. If you don't know what that means, how many of you have been seeing more pictures of your friend's dinner if they post it than you have of subscriptions that you that you uh, have taken or groups that you've joined? There's a reason for that. They're trying to make it more of a one-on-one -on -one person thing. Well, what that has done has moved a lot of us in the media down and people that would normally see this show they don't so sharing and subscribing is more important if you want to keep people like me doing what we do then it's very important that you hit share and that you hit subscribe and that you make sure other people watch and listen and hear and learn what it is that you're getting from the show of course lastly you can help with the correct views at hotmail.com you can donate through PayPal, and all the money that I get, I put towards a better show, full of information um, that you're not going to get a lot of other places with uh, the insight that I bring to it. I've been a journalist now for quite some time, and um, I've got some interesting stories here that, you, like I said, you didn't get them elsewhere. So let's dive right into it here on the massive Fukushima update. This is from the Daily Star poisoning fears as Japan plans to use, this is almost too insane to believe, plans to use radioactive Fukushima soil to build the roads. Now, for a long time, people have talked about the fact that they don't want there to be any waste of any kind. They're going to make money off of it regardless. And if that means jeopardizing the health of every man, woman, and child that happens to travel down that road, then so be it. They don't really have a problem with it. Their morality level isn't real high on the uh, compass chart there. In case you haven't guessed, by the way, that TEPCO has run things all along. And much of the uh, Japanese government as well, I would add, but uh, let's take a look at this. Let's see how, how preposterous things can possibly get. The country's environment, or environment ministry wants to use the radiation-tainted material to rebuild a number of roads in the region that were devastated by the tsunami in 2011. But the proposal has sparked fury among residents over fears that they could be poisoned by the soil. A briefing about the news on Thursday saw angry scenes erupt with locals in the city of Nuhan Matsu yelling about how the roads will be contaminated. Authorities have been desperately trying to convince people that it will be safe, saying that the soil will be buried under the clean earth and that it will block any harmful radiation. Okay, now let's listen. Let, let's just follow this train of logic here. Um, now, this is going to be hard to do. I'm asking you to do something damn near impossible here. Let's pretend you're allowed to laugh. You won't be able to without. Let's pretend that that pile of horse manure that I just read to you was true. The radiation will be buried deep enough that it won't harm anyone. Do roads crack and break during an earthquake? Maybe like the one that we saw in 2011. Because if they do, considering that Japan has a history of earthquakes, but as all islands do, of course, um, doesn't it stand to reason that this buried nuclear soil is going to work its way up the next time a disaster like that happens? Oh, but Sam, disasters like that don't happen that often. Okay, let's say it doesn't happen again for 50 or 100 years. Those radionuclei will be just as poisonous and just as deadly then as they are now. 
Therefore, if you use the contaminated soil, it doesn't take an Einstein to figure out what's going to happen in time. And that's just one way. Uh, let's remember, too, that rainwater falls into the earth, into the ground, and this contaminated soil is going to poison the entire water. The, the, the water system, the rainwater, the drinking water, it's, it's going to poison everything. They want to put the poisonous soil deep in the ground, you know, because water doesn't go deep into the ground or anything, does it? And we're talking about elements here that cause cancer, heart disease, that cause illness, pain, misery, and lessen the quality and length of people's lives here. Much of the Fukushima prefecture has been a no-go zone, of course, after the earthquake and meltdowns, it should say. But the Japanese government is still trying to encourage survivors of the disaster to move back into their homes. Yeah, because they want the commerce and the good of the bottom dollar. They don't care what that actually does to the people there. And this is even though high levels of radiation are still being found. And let's look, look at the infections on the bore there. That's a Fukushima bore. Fears have been raised about the radiation from Fukushima entering the food chain and poisoning the people. How about the water supply from the ground, morons? In the last two years, highly toxic cesium-134, the fingerprint of Fukushima, has been found in certain locations along the West Coast, the U.S. West Coast. Of course, this is due to the vastly contaminated water that leaked into the ocean when the tsunami hit in 11. Now, again, and I've, I've said this repeatedly on the show, I cannot be more clear. If you are living in um, California, Oregon, Alaska, any, any of these states, Washington, up and down the coast, you're not only jeopardizing your health, but you're jeopardizing your families. And it's not a pithy sort of maybe I might get contaminated issue here. You are getting contaminated. Come on, let's face it. Where do storms come from? Over the ocean. Very good. How many non-radioactive tuna have we seen from the ocean? Zero. Very good. You are paying attention. Um, I had written this for the uh, Conservative Daily Post, so I don't usually, uh, I don't normally just read the article, but I'm going to since it's my article. And I think I put it together very well here. This is just good to know that they exist. The Department of Energy begins conducting radiation tests on the Boston Marathon route. And, of course, a lot of people are going to say you tend to see these kinds of tests by the government. And then, miraculously, the real thing happens. That's addressed here, too. Just listen to it. Whenever authorities are preparing for the worst, there are two ways to view it. On one hand, making sure that everyone who needs to act if disaster strikes are prepared to do so, is vital. That is just prudent leadership. However, many times it appears as if the very disaster being prepared for is a dry run for the real event. It is hoped that such a scenario is not the case, as CBS Boston reports what is in their skies. As of yesterday, I wrote, low-flying helicopters are on the lookout as the Department of Energy's National Nuclear Security Administration will be conducting radiation tests between Hopington and Boston. Everyone is being told to not be alarmed. Considering the nightmare that Alaska just suffered, this is not such a bad idea, but it has many people looking upwards. And again, by that I mean we know that uh, there was radio, radioactive contamination over Alaska, and we think it may have been a leak or a test from our friends in Russia. Thank you, Mr. Putin. Uh, and again, they're notorious for this. Uh, Mavec, Chernobyl, uh, look at the uh, deformities in the uh, the Baltic regions. You'll, you'll be able to see what I mean, painfully so. I go on here that the tests will carry on through Sunday, and the department says that they are monitoring naturally occurring radiation levels and is a normal part of preparing for any major public event. Um, when it's remembered that there are those who would happily risk their own lives just to inflict a radioactive death on innocence, anything suspicious that is nipped in the bud early is good. If someone, for instance, had acquired nuclear material with illegal means like stealing x-ray machines, these flights would expose it due to the signature which is given off by the dangerous elements. Ever since 2014, the tests have taken place in Massachusetts, so the public is being told not to be concerned about the low-flying whirly birds. 
They will be flying in a grid pattern about 150 feet above the ground and going about 80 miles per hour, the department confirmed. Um, and the flights are not just in the event of a nuclear bomb attack or a dirty bomb attack, but also in the event of a nuclear power station mishap. America has an aging population of time bombs, and keeping an eye on them is a must, I wrote. The storage of the fuel rods and other highly toxic substances are located in closed plants as well. Um, see, the active plants often have ample security, but those shuttered and still housing such waste could be easy pickings for the right terrorists. Therefore, as long as this is not a precursor to the real thing, which happens far too often by coincidence, it is said, the fact that such concerns are being addressed before anything is amiss is something that everyone can get behind. And uh, friends, if you like that article, do remember that I am a journalist, and if you would like me to write for your publication, I know this tends to get to a lot of people, then please definitely keep me in mind. Um, let's move on to this, talking about our friends in Russia, the former Soviet state, as it were. Russian doomsday machine nuke could wipe out coastal infrastructure with 300-foot tsunamis. Now, how many of you are as obsessed, well, probably not quite to the level I am, but how many of you are close to as obsessed with Stanley Kubrick's film Dr. Strangelove as I am? If you are, then you will remember that uh, they were trying to build the Doomsday Machine. And in that scenario, the Doomsday Machine was a, a weapon that if Russia was attacked, even if the leadership was knocked out, there was nothing anyone could do to prevent the Doomsday Machine from launching an all-out strike, which would, of course, poison the entire world. Great movie, if you haven't seen it. My band, Passing Time... I Shameless plug their samples quite frequently. Listen to this. Russia's, this is in the Daily Mail, Russia's new nuclear drone submarine could be capable of causing 300-foot high tsunamis able to wipe out coastal cities. I would say so. Um, the existence of the drone, a believed to be a Stratus 6 system, also known as Putin's doomsday machine, has confirmed was confirmed by the Russian president himself in an annual State of the Nation speech in Moscow last month. So this isn't um, conjecture or uh, you know, hyperbole here. Experts say that a 50 megaton underwater nuclear bomb would be able to create tsunami waves reaching a staggering 320 feet. The Status 6 is allegedly able to carry a 100 megaton warhead. Now, there are a few things here, and this is why I tell you to subscribe, because other people won't give you this insight. There are a few things that Mr. Putin isn't realizing here, even if his new toy works like he hopes that it does. First of all, if you send a tidal wave over all of the nuclear power plants that we have on the coast, Mr. Putin, what is it you think is going to come and see you in the jet stream? Think about how the atmosphere works here. Second of all, it's known that the world would starve if America was not producing food. Now, you could say, well, anybody can grow food there. Yes, as long as the continent of America is growing food, then the world will not starve. But there are a lot of places where you can't grow the kinds of food in the amounts needed that you can in America. So what you're looking at now is he washes over the nuclear power plants. He creates all this trouble. What are they going to eat? Oh, they, they can buy from other nations, of course. But Russia also, is also a very big place. And there are a lot of things that do not grow well in the frozen tundra. So there are two instances right there where I don't think Putin is playing with a full deck here. The Stratus 6, it's not like a cartoon weapon, is reported to have a range of 6,200 miles with top speeds of 56 knots and an ability to carry nuclear warheads within range of the United States. In his speech on March 1st, Putin said that high-speed underwater drone also has an intercontinental range and is, in ca and is capable of carrying a nuclear warhead that could target both aircrafts and coastal facilities. 
he said it's an operational depth and high speed that uh, would make it immune to enemy intercept and said, quote, it's just fantastic. Yeah, you know, poison yourself, Putin. That's great. Physicist and uh, nuclear weapons researcher Rex Richardson told the Business Insider, you had no business insider. Yes, I said it. The Business Insider that an underwater warhead dropped by the drone it could destroy coastal cities. Now, the fact that Russia is even thinking along these lines is quite worrisome. And when we get to the dummy of the day, we're going to do it a bit more because there's a chance that this could end up in all this technology could end up in the hands of Iran, who is their little uh, Muslim buddy as of late, despite their record for cruelty. A well placed nuclear weapon of yield in the range of 20 megatons to 50 megatons near the seacoast could certainly couple enough energy to equal the. 2011 tsunami in Japan, which killed 16,000 people and perhaps much more. Again, that's what we're doing here, the Fukushima update. So he wants to create a Fukushima in America as if Russia doesn't already have enough birth defects from their other nuclear bridges. We also have to remember that during the Obama administration, and I think possibly during Trump's, Boats from Russia, what were Russian submarines and warcraft, uh, well, not warcraft, the submarines, well, I guess they are warcraft, were seen in United States waters, oftentimes not picked up. They left signatures later. They've all but come up and kissed us on the cheek without us knowing that they're there. And now they're talking about these new uh, spiffy nuclear weapons that, you know, can create a tsunami over them. They've talked about causing an EMP flash over the U.S. before. The Russian leadership, my friends, are totally unhinged here. It's not Mr. Trump that's a threat to world peace. It's it's not even, at this point, Kim Jong-un, perhaps. It seems to be more Z and Putin. Taking advantage of the rising seafloor amplification effect, tsunami waves reach 328 feet, that's 100 meters, in, in height, uh, that's perfectly possible. Mr. Richardson added that much of an underwater nuclear bomb dropped off the coast of the United States would be able to cause catastrophic damage to cities such as L.A. and San Diego, though, uh, and of course that would happen through the fallout that would happen in many rains. The Status 6 was one of several new nuclear weapons which uh, President Putin announced as having undergone tests in recent months. In the state of the art, a state of the nation speech, excuse me, Putin said that the arsenal includes a nuclear powered cruise missile, a new hypersonic missile, and showed video footage of the launch of a new heavy intercontinental ballistic missile on big screens. And uh, he said that the US led missile defense systems would be useless against this technology. Um, this is Cold War talk here. This is the kind of thing that many people I hope they'd never see again in their lifetime. And now it's back. It's back as strong as ever. You're listening to The Correct Views. You're listening to the massive Fukushima update. There is still more to go. But again, for the reason I said earlier, I want to remind everyone you can donate at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. You can donate to PayPal. Uh, listen to this, friends. I also wrote this one, and I was very proud of the way it came out. White House responds, new and compelling Iran info. I wrote this today, like mere hours ago, so you can't say that I am giving you late news here on May Day, the communist day that uh, sees uh, France in flames because anarchists who couldn't win at the ballot box are trying to win with a matchbox. Yeah, I said it. That's pretty clever, wasn't it? As Iran moves ahead with plans to foolishly build a nuclear power plant on one of the most active fault lines in the region, President Donald Trump and others continue to remind the world that the Islamic nation has nefarious nuclear plans. Yahoo News has just confirmed that Israel has released data showing that Iran's nuclear program is working alongside plans that the nation has for, quote, missile, uh, missile deliverable nuclear weapons. The information is said to offer new and compelling details, according to the White House. So um, Israel sort of put the cards on the table here for Mr. Trump. Uh, these facts are consistent with what the United States has long known. Iran had a robust clandestine nuclear weapons program 
that it has tried and failed to hide from the world and from its own people, the White House said in a statement. I don't know how well, much they've tried to hide it, considering that Khomeini and others have been out there are gloating about what they've done. Um, the best part of the article is this paragraph here, for those of you that know history. The deal applauded by the left and crafted by former U.S. President Obama and former Sec Secretary of State John Kerry may be the worst screed drawn up since Neville Chamberlain shook hands with Adolf Hitler. On March 12th, President Donald Trump will decide if the U.S. is going to remain with Kerry's deal, a fact that seems unlikely since Iran has broken the terms uh, or withdrawal. Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu has warned about this problem on a number of occasions. This is an important element of the story I wrote, since Iran's leadership has said that America plans to renege on the deal for no reason. However, the reasons are plenteous and easy to see, I wrote. Um, the sad fact is that Iran has all but boasted that it shall do what it wants apart from any deal reached, and the sardonic grin that Hassan Rouhani wears only purposefully highlights this truth. Have you seen it? absolutely arrogant, sardonic, mocking grin. Um, it's an open secret, I said, that even a dirty bomb made crudely from nuclear waste may be used against the Jews, the West, or others. The fuel rods and components used in nuclear fission are too frightfully toxic to overstate. There is also the fact that even if Iran was to suddenly become a more moderate Muslim nation, as Saudi Arabia seems to be doing, the reality of the earthquake zone makes it a ripe candidate for, Middle Eastern, for a Middle Eastern Fukushima-like event. Then again, only yesterday I wrote it was learned that Russia is building, deploying, and threatening to sell floating nuclear power plants to nations. We'll get to that in a moment. Considering that Vladimir Putin, who has come up a lot here on our update, has sparked quite a friendship with the cruel leaders of Iran, the outcome of this is almost too grim to speculate. It may not matter what happens to the deal if this sale were to happen. If Russia attempted such a sale, the U.S. would have to decide how far to push back against a nuclear arm, the nuclear-armed former Soviet state. To push too hard could lead to war, and to allow the sale could easily lead to war. As horrid as that sounds, I said currently that is the state of the Iran deal and their nuclear program. Uh, guys, only two, only uh, two to get to here. Uh, this I'm not even gonna get. To, uh, I'm not gonna play the whole video, but I want you to see it. I want you to go and look at it because what what's going on here is for three days in a row we have found that uh, we have found that England has not been using coal, but that has come at a very severe cost. It's come as the UK is cutting down, like it says here, huge swaths of America's forest in order to fight climate change, which we've already proven repeatedly on this show is not happening. And they're using nuclear power plants to do it. Setting a new record and underlying the polluting fuels rapid climb. Now, this is seen as a big victory in the fight against global warming, or what is now called climate change, because they're trying to phase out coal as it is a carbon-producing pollutant. But there is a slight catch, as The Guardian reports. Without this fossil fuel, nearly a third of Britain's electricity was supplied by gas, followed by wind farms and nuclear on around a quarter each. Most a quarter from nuclear power. Now, we already know how toxic nuclear power is, but how many... Let's just take another big leap here. Let's pretend that we believe in global warming because we can't read or something. I don't know why else anybody would. But let's pretend we agree with it. Do you know how, much, how many fossil fuels are burned during the mining of uranium? The processing of uranium. The hauling and delivery of uranium, the cranes, the, the machines to bring the uranium out of the ground. It is worse for the environment to go nuclear than it is without. And you're going to say, Sam, you got a Trump sign behind you. Why should we believe you? We hate Trump. That's fine. So does Helen Caldicott. And she agrees with me. And she's a physicist, a doctor, I should say. Excuse me. Um, I'm pretty sure... Um, 
uh, what's his name? Um, Busby, Chris Buzz, Dr. Chris Busby, who is a physicist, agrees with me. And he's not a Trump supporter, I don't think. Nuclear is not the answer to global warming. And if you think it is, I'll tell you, you should get the dumb of the day, which is important because we're going in to the dumb of the day. Oh, yes, friends. Uh, that means uh, Dunce Cap of the Month, for those of you that don't know, uh, will be going off uh, probably later this week, maybe on the weekend. Um, I am having a little trouble getting these sent because uh, money has uh, taken a departure from me recently. So if you could be so kind as to donate, it costs about uh, eight, ten bucks to mail out these Dunce Caps. So. Here's the dumb the other day, friends. I wrote this for the conservative Daily Post. Russia sends nuclear reactor to the Arctic. The floating nuclear reactor has upset environmentalist groups for good reason. You heard me. A floating nuclear freaking reactor. What the hell is this? This came out of nowhere. It hit me like a manhole cover. I didn't even, did anybody hear anything about this, even remotely on the drawing board? When it comes to frequency and severity of nuclear disasters, no one compares to the Russians, I wrote. Chernobyl was so dreadful that a generation later, horror movies are being made about the real-life catastrophe that deformed so many people. This 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 wasn't this wasn't a this is one of the worst nuclear disasters in history, friends. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Many have forgotten the level six nightmare known as Kitchen disaster, also Mavic, where skin swathed off bones like candle wax. Yet in November of last year, it was suspected that Russia tested a leak nuclear materials and hit it again. As the Independent has revealed, the Russians have learned nothing at all from history. I even bolded the word nothing. The nuclear Titanic is the grim name being given to the controversial floating nuclear power plant that has begun its first voyage in what may be one of the most ill-advised ideas in history. The floating power station, that is one rogue wave away from disaster, is known as the Academic Lomonosov and was towed out of St. Petersburg shipyard where it was constructed. It happened on Saturday. Embattled nuclear giant Rostam. Of course, uh, we are, if that sounds familiar, familiar to you, it's because you know about the scandal that has been stemming from the crooked one herself, uh, Mrs. Clinton. And that's, that's saying Rostam. Um, not Rodham, Rost Rostam. The energy firm that constructed the potential floating Fukushima has confirmed that the plant shall be towed through the Baltic Sea to a base in Murmsk. There has never been a power station such, of this, such as this, and yet it has gained enough trust that it is to be loaded with toxic radioactive fuel and it is being taken to the Arctic port of Pevik in the summer of 2019. In a world where every environmentalist seems to screech at the thought of drilling, a far more deadly concoction of science is going to be drifting through the seas with a little fanfare. Greenpeace, I wrote to their credit, have called the plant a floating Chernobyl, a truth that only holds true if it keeps floating. After tech, uh, yeah, after tech recent disaster in Japan, already the world is seeing a mass die-off of animal life. And in, it's happening in the Pacific. No one, I saw the typo, I'm joking. No one can, no, no, excuse me, not one ocean tuna from that ocean has been found to be clean of Japanese radiation. Yet Russia is risking a second nightmare in waters not far removed from the area. Again, that's in terms of radiation. I don't mean true mileage. Work with me here, friends. Use the thinking part of your brain. Um, Jan Haverkamp is a nuclear expert who works with Greenpeace. He declared that to test a nuclear reactor in a densely populated area like the center of St. Petersburg is irresponsible, to say the least. However, moving the testing of this nuclear Titanic away from the public eye will not make it less so. They always try to do with all things radioactive, don't they? Unless, unless you get a metallic taste from, uh, I think it's iodine, you, you can't even tell it's there. So just poison everyone with it, right? They won't know. They're fine. Although it has been repeatedly established that man is not warming the planet, I have links there to prove it. For those who buy the leftist line on the, on the topic, 
Haverkamp showed why they too should be alarmed. Nuclear reactors bobbing around the Arctic Ocean will pose a shockingly obvious threat to a fragile environment which is already under enormous pressure from climate change, he opined. The expert said that this hazardous venture is not just a threat to the Arctic, but potentially to other densely populated and vulnerable natural regions too. The remote regions of Russia's north and east are to get the power from the station, and it can produce, are you ready for this? It can produce enough energy to uh, power a town of 100,000 people. It's floating around, it's lighting to go red. The second plant is to be built in 2019, I wrote, and Russia may even market these dangerous structures to other nations. Now, friends, stay with me here. I expect some comments on this. Listen, soon... These nuclear power plants could be owned by any nation and, in theory, used as a weapon. Those who don't mind dying for a religion could easily poison whole sections of the earth, if not all of it, with such devices. That is, if they don't malfunction by themselves, with no malicious intent needed. Of course, uh, this is awful close to other nations, so this isn't a matter of just Russia's freedom. It's like having a meth lab as your duplex neighbor. If he blows up, you blow up. Norway and Sweden are quite less than pleased by Russia's new machines. Any mistake would impact them as they have, as if they had been bombed. In a statement that sounds remarkably, listen to this. This is this floored me. In a statement that sounds remarkably like the Titanic, of which comparisons are being made, the manufacturer said the Lomonosov is designed with the great margin of safety that exceeds all possible threats and makes nuclear reactors invincible for tsunamis and other natural disasters. They all but called it unsinkable. Sound familiar? In addition, the nuclear processes of the floating power plant meet all the requirements the International Atomic Agency has put forth, and they do not pose any threat to the environment, they also said. Then again, so did Three Mile Island, Fukushima, Windscale, Chernobyl, Maybach. You get the point, friends. That is your massive Fukushima update. Thank you so much for listening. Yes, I am asking one more time. Please donate to the show at the correct use of Hotmail.com through PayPal because uh, we've been demonetized because we tell the truth. And look up demonetization YouTube. You'll find a lot of people like me talking about it. Good night, friends. God bless. Hit share, hit subscribe, and thanks for watching.